Waves gently lap against the coast of southern Italy as young Norman knights jump down from their ships and cover their eyes from the harsh Italian sun. Now you may ask why these Normans are in Italy. Then we first need to understand southern Italy in the beginning of the 11th century. Most of southern Italy was separated into three separate Lombard duchies, with them all originally under the rule of Benevento. The first to split was Salerno in 851 after a brutal civil war, while Capua declared its independence from Benevento 11 years after Salerno split. The beleaguered Byzantines still held on to Apulia and Calibria, with their rules increasingly unstable, as discontent Lombards plot the demise of Byzantine Italy. Meanwhile in the north, the papacy saw opportunity south and welcomed any chance to dabble in his affairs. In this unstable climate, the Normans came into the picture when in 1016, a group of 40 knights, coming back from a pilgrimage, stopped at a monastery near the border of Benevento. There they were approached by Melis, a Lombard nobleman, who was in exile because of his failed attempts to wrestle back Apulia from the Byzantines. He asked if the Normans would help him drive the Greeks out, and to his delight, they agreed, promising to come back in a year with even more Normans. However, this rebellion, even with the Normans, was crushed by the Byzantines, who had immediately called for reinforcements from Constantinople. Even as they lost, the Byzantines were so impressed by the Normans that they decided to hire them to sweep up their former allies, which they were more than happy to do. In 1035, the Otwils reached southern Italy, just as the Byzantines were going to launch a campaign to reconquer Sicily from the Emirate, with them being led by George Maniakes, a rising star in the Empire. He had hired Norman knights to help him, including the eldest son of the Otvilles, William, who would quickly make a name for himself. At first, the Greeks made great strides, conquering all of the major fortresses east of Syracuse, where their local emir put up a fierce defense. They tried to storm Syracuse, but with every failed attempt, the Byzantine army grew even more demoralized. And after one failed episode, the emir opened the gates to sally out with him personally leading it. This sally out caught the Byzantines off guard, and they retreated with the situation only saved by William, who charged a mirror and struck him, nearly splitting the man in half, getting his nickname of William Ironarm. The soldiers, now seeing their leader dead, retreated back into their cities, and only a few days later, they surrendered. Unfortunately for the Byzantine campaign, even with their victories, they were driven back due to a lack of supplies. When William arrived back, he instigated a rebellion of Lombards in their Byzantine province of Apulia, and within a year, a chunk of Apulia belonged to William, with the local Byzantine governor finally assembling his army to fight the Normans. Even as the Normans were outnumbered, the Byzantines couldn't withstand a Norman heavy cavalry charge, with the remaining Byzantines fleeing. In two months, an even larger force of Byzantines attacked, but was also defeated, and when the emperor finally heard the news, he relented and sent the one man that could stop the Normans, Maniacus. Maniacus quickly destroyed almost all local support, but he was just so recalled by one of his enemies. However, this time Maniacus had enough, with him declaring himself emperor and racing back to Constantinople, where he got crowned, but one time he was skirmishing against loyal imperial forces and was killed. Now with their best chance to settle things militarily out the window, the emperor decided to use the old Byzantine style of bribing the enemy. The Greeks bribed the Lombard nobles to their side, so now the Normans were faced by a dilemma. Though they were still fighting for Lombard freedom, at least in name, but they didn't trust the Lombards enough, so they elected one of their own as leader. William Ironarm was elected leader and was granted the title of Count of Apulia and leader of the Norman forces. But this was only a name, as he didn't hold any real authority over his fellow countrymen. But this was enough for him to establish himself as a regional powerhouse, marrying the niece of the Prince of Salerno, in exchange for the prince recognizing his so-called County of Apulia. William died in 1045, and his younger brother became the new Count. With his half-brother Robert arriving two years later, he would be assigned a poor and desolate region. He was forced to live off the land, and intentionally set fire to the crops of the locals to charge him for putting them out, with him quickly gaining his new nickname of Guescard, translated into the Crafty. But before long, a Lombard rebellion, encouraged by the Byzantines, swept through Norman-held Apulia, while the Count of Apulia was killed in a chapel by assassins. The remaining Normans regrouped and fought back brutally, killing anybody who resisted them, thinking a show of force would put the rebellion down, but they did not realize the magnitude of the situation. This also incurred the wrath of Pope Leo IX, with the Vicar of Christ at the head of the army ready to invade Apulia. Pope first wrote a letter to the Emperor of the Byzantine Empire, Constantine IX, offering a joint alliance against the Normans, which the Emperor readily agreed to. News of the invading papal army finally woke the Normans, as he desperately put out a call for all able-bodied men with them electing Humphrey, the oldest Otville, as their leader. 
Normans drew up near the little town of Civitate in 1051, charging and surprising the Pope's Lombard allies. With only the Pope's Swabian mercenaries standing their ground, but they too were slaughtered. The Pope walked out graciously to meet his enemies, with the Normans as good Catholics begging for forgiveness. But as well as he treated him, it was still blatantly obvious that the Vicar of Christ was now a prisoner of the Normans. The Byzantines were so disheartened by this defeat that they abandoned all attempts of fighting the Normans. After the battle, Humphrey and his half-brother, Robert Gescard, had a falling out, with Robert returning back to Calabria to conquer the region from the Byzantines. And luckily for him, the Emperor at the time was unable to stop him. Now on his deathbed, the elder Otville swallowed his pride and named Robert as his new successor, with him passing away in 1057. After Humphrey's death, Robert made an alliance with the Pope, who in exchange for legitimizing Robert, had the Normans swear that if the Holy Roman Emperor ever marched down to Rome, they could count on the Normans. Next, he started evicting the Byzantines of the bit of territory they still held onto, conquering everything in Byzantine Apulia except Bari, where the Greeks still resisted stiffly. Now satisfied with Apulia, Robert now campaigned with his brother, Roger, an emperor of Sicily, which luckily for them was now just a patchwork of minor Berber and Arab states, which the Normans exploited, plunging into Sicily in 1070. But after a year of long and hard campaigning in Sicily, he turned the reins to his brother. In April of 1071, Bari fell, ending nearly five centuries of Byzantine rule in Italy. While in Sicily, in 1091, the last Muslim resistance was snuffed out, with the last emir being removed by power by the Normans, ending the Norman conquest of southern Italy. 